In Brazil, uh, we have had a significant blow to democracy. Uh, the leader of Brazil has been impeached. And so right now, it's just a suspension. Uh, and I'm going to explain it all to you guys. Um, uh, now, she was unpopular, uh, but there was um, an intense media campaign. Uh, and the media in Brazil is owned by private interests who are all incredibly wealthy. Uh, they ran this campaign against her, and unfortunately, it has worked. So first, let me take you through uh, just the standard Reuters article explaining what happened and show you why I started to get red flags about what happened in Brazil. And, and honestly, I had not been following this closely, so I had no preconceived notions uh, about this situation. But as I started reading in on it, the red flags appeared. So let's start right at the beginning. Brazil's Senate voted on Thursday to put leftist President Dilma Rousseff on trial in a historic decision brought on by a deep recession and a corruption scandal that will now confront her successor, Vice President uh, Michelle uh, Temer. Okay, so we've got a leftist president uh, that the, uh, the wealthy in the country have been going after nonstop. Okay, not a big deal, that happens all the time uh, and doesn't mean she wasn't corrupt, right? So let's keep reading, uh, but it is a note. Now, with Rousseff uh, to be suspended during the Senate trial, for allegedly breaking budget rules, the centrist Tamara will take the helm. Well, I got two red flags right there. Wait a minute, I thought this was about corruption. Now all of a sudden it's about breaking budget rules? We'd have to arrest every Republican in, in the country if that's the case. And by the way, almost all the Democrats uh, in America as well. Breaking budget rules? That, that's a thing that you get put on trial for? Okay. Well, let's see. I mean, let's keep going. See, maybe they have something else on her, uh, and and that's just the tip of the iceberg, right? Actually, I, I already read the whole thing and invest. They don't have anything else. Breaking budget rules. That's it. And uh, Tamara is not in her party. The vice president that replaced her. He's a centrist. Okay, here we go. Get the leftist out. Put in the so-called centrist to do exactly what the, those private interests want. I've seen this movie before. Okay, but let's keep going. Uh, early Thursday, uh, Tamara Aid said the incoming government would announce a series of austerity measures. Okay, now you can say it with me. Of course! Leftists. No, austerity. Okay, the Brazilian people will pay back those investors, okay? The investors have to have their way and they will get a good rate of return on the backs of the Brazilian people. Here comes the austerity measures. Probably had nothing to do with it. Probably those budgetary rules were so important. Okay. Tamer plans to appoint Enrique Morales, and sorry for butchering all of these uh, names, a former central bank president and banking executive who's popular with foreign investors. So here comes the people popular with foreign investors. If you haven't seen this movie before, it happens all over the world. You get really wealthy people who uh, donate, uh, sometimes venture capitalists, uh, hedge funds, private equity guys, foreign investors, banks, large banks, right? Uh, and they are usually uh, in some ways uh, aligned with the incredibly wealthy people inside Brazil. And some of the people inside Brazil are also owed money by the government. And the people who own the media are usually incredibly wealthy corporations or individuals. And they decide that they would like a good rate of return. And if things are going south a little bit, it's time to annoy, move that annoying leftist out who's trying to like, care about the poor, the middle class. No, no, no. Foreign investors must be paid. Okay, so here comes austerity measures. And uh, what are they going to do as part of that? Quote, overhaul of pension, tax, and labor laws. Here, I'll go ahead and make a prediction ahead of time that the tax revisions they make are not going to be to tax the rich more. No. It's going to be to cut your pension if you live in Brazil. It's going to be to get loosen labor laws, so deregulate, so they can pay you less and they can make sure that there's less safety concerns, so they can make more money, and the taxes will be redistributed towards the top. That's going to be the austerity measures put in by finance ministers friendly to foreign investors. Okay, well, what else is this new administration promising? Well, quote, they're promising pro-market policies, another flag, uh, to bring the deficit under control, rein in inflation, and get the economy growing again. Now, again, I want to clarify here. It's not that the Brazilian economy doesn't have troubles. It does. And I'm not saying that Rousseff was 
the best uh, leader Brazil could have or that she uh, did a wonderful job. So those, that's a level of detail that I honestly have not gotten into, right? And, and, and could you have a better leader of Brazil? Could it be from a different party? All those things are, of course, eminently possible. But what I care more about is democracy. Do we have a real democracy in Brazil? Because it's one of the largest nations in the world, or, and, or do we not, right? So if all of a sudden you have, in essence, a coup with a made-up charge of violating budgetary rules, uh, that has actually nothing to do with corruption, and you remove somebody from power because you want foreign investors to be paid off, and for there to be pro-market decisions that are made, that is not the right way to conduct your democracy. Okay. Um, well, now you might say, Jenk, let's be fair. Uh, the guy who's replacing her, the vice president, um, he's probably more popular, right? So fair is fair because she is at this point uh, very unpopular in Brazil. Okay, so let's find out what percentage of people in Brazil would like Tamer to be uh, the president instead. Just 1% of those surveyed would vote for him if there were new elections. Wow. I'm not sure I've ever seen someone more unpopular in my life in any country. He'd get 1% of the vote. Democracy? Who needs that? No, we just get rid of the democratically elected person who was, by the way, recently. Uh, re-elected, and we just put in the guy who is maybe the most unpopular guy in the country. Okay, well, uh, now we go to the intercept and we find out more about this guy. Um, uh, okay, he's not popular, but since we had so-called corruption, at least he's probably squeaky clean, right? Here's what the intercept reports. The person to be installed is awash in corruption, accused by informants of involvement in an illegal ethanol purchasing scheme. He was just found guilty of and fined for election spending violations and faces an eight year ban on running for any office. They put in a guy who literally won't be able to run for dog catcher in Brazil, but that's, and he is the most unpopular politician in the country, but because foreign investors, they got to get paid. So you've got some real issues in, with the economy and with the budget in Brazil. You had a democracy, you elected someone, well the foreign investors didn't like the person you elected. So they did a propaganda campaign against her over and over and over until, uh, well, we invented a non-corruption scandal called budgetary rule violations and out she goes. The Intercept explains about Tamara, the guy coming in, uh, but don't worry, he will faithfully serve the interests of Brazil's richest. He's planning to appoint Goldman Sachs and IMF officials to IMF officials to run the economy and otherwise install a totally unrepresentative neoliberal team composed in part of the same party, PSDB, that has lost four straight elections to the PT. That's Rousseff's party. So the party that lost the four elections is now somehow, in essence, back in charge along with Goldman Sachs. Now, you can say, hey, The Intercept, Glenn Greenwald, yes, he lives in Brazil, he's an expert, he's a great reporter, uh, but some of you will say, no, he's a progressive, so that's not fair. Well, let's go to The Economist. The Economist is nobody's liberal. Okay, that is a magazine that is fairly conservative, certainly conservative on economic issues. And even The Economist said that this procedure was, quote, a pretext for ousting an unpopular president. So even the conservatives are like, come on, let's keep it real. There was no real corruption scandal here. It's just a pretext, right? We don't like her. We got to get her out. And back to that private media that ran the campaign against her. Um, Reporters Without Borders says, quote, and remember, these are the guys who are in charge of making sure that the journalists are on point, right? They protect journalists. They like media. They like journalists. But here's what they say. In a barely veiled manner, the leading national media have urged the public to help bring down President Dilma Rousseff. The journalists working for these media groups are clearly subject to the influence of private and partisan interests, and these permanent conflicts of interest are clearly very detrimental to the quality of their reporting. That's a very polite way of saying, yeah, they made up a lot of stuff against her because their corporate bosses told them, we don't like her, we want our guy in charge. Okay. Um, <laughs> and how about the supposed purpose of this? It was because, oh my God, there's corruption, that's why we had to do it. 
Well, for that, we go back to Greenwald at the intercept. He says, how can anyone who is minimally rational believe this is about corruption when they are about to install as president someone far more implicated in corruption than the person they are removing? Well, a very fair point indeed. All right, but I want to leave you with one more person who is outraged by this impeachment. He says, impeachment is unthinkable, would create an institutional crisis, there is no judicial or political basis for it. Wait a minute, that's Tamara, the vice president who just replaced the president. Oops. Earlier, even he had said that this is a farce and unacceptable. Now he's like, well, what am I going to do? I guess I'm president. The least popular, perhaps most corrupt guy in the country, all of a sudden put into power by foreign investors. Does that look like a democracy to you?